Uh, long time ago, I tell you a story. Long time ago, you know, when I was small, uh, you know, I was cute back then. Now, I'm so that. So, when I was small at that time, I used to, I'm very curious, so I always watch my mom cook. And what happened is that uh, she has this habit when she uh, cook, you know, when she wants to fry fish. So, you have the fish, she will chop off the head, chop off the tail, and then boil. I'm curious at that time. Mommy, mommy, why you can't chop off the head, chop off the tail? Cannot eat me the head? I always say to Asam Laksa, why you cannot eat me? So my mom looked at me, smiled, thought, Oh yeah, oh, don't know lah. Last time when I see grandma cook like that, ah, I also follow lah. Me, being not satisfied, satisfied with the answer, I ran off to grandma lah. Grandma, grandma, last time ah, uh, when you cook fish ah, why you chop off the head, chop off the tail, and then walk? Oh, grandma smiled and looked at me. Yeah la, last time when we were poor and pants were expensive, we can only afford one this size. So if we don't chop the head and tail, the fish won't fit in the pan. So the moral of the story is, times have changed. Things have, tools have changed. Tools are more affordable now. So we need to adapt. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Melvin Lim from the Technology Practice Group. We are the research and development arms of uh, BAG Networks. I'm here to talk to you about adaptive software uh, best practices. Um, before we move on, let me quickly explain you know, your traditional waterfall model. I mean, almost everyone would have understood this. Uh, you have your five stage requirement design, implementation, verification, and maintenance. Um, standard la, requirement, la. You, everyone should have heard this. La. Your boss come up to you, yeah, hey, Melvin, la, can you make this software do this, that does this, that does Okay, no? you run off to your subject matter expert. You ask, you gather your business requirement, you gather your functional specs, and then you start preparing. But then again, you know, la, your development teams are all you know, they're nerds, they're te technical people. So you have to translate those things and work, break them down into technical tasks. This is where your design comes in. You break them, you plan what you're going to do, you plan uh, what, sy what system, what operating system, whether it's a Linux uh, server, Windows server, what database. On, after it, uh, that's done, no. we do what every leader is good at. You delegate. Nah, programmer one, do this. Programmer two, do this. Programmer three, do this. That's your implementation. So after weeks and months of uh, coding, they finish coding, then they integrate with different teams. Then that's where you come to the user assessment test. You do your testing before you deploy into uh, your production environment. You do your verification. Uh, you make sure that your business your business requirements and business scope are met, but uh, met. And once that's done, and you know you sign off, you close. It's where you go into maintenance, your support. So you have your uh, database. This is where your DB administrators, your web administrators, your server administrators comes in, and they uh, you maintain your server. Some uh, organization have uh, their own CRM team. They have their call centers. Um, this is what a waterfall model looks like when you apply to project management. So project management is in a way almost similar in that sense, except that uh, after closing, you don't have maintenance. After sign off, that's it, you know, it's not my problem. So this is a typical software development cycle uh, from a waterfall model. Uh, a waterfall model is uh, essentially a sequential model. It's basically you finish one process, you move on to the next one, and finish the second process, you move on to the third one. For a strict uh, waterfall approach, normally what happens is that you do not go back to the different uh, the, to the different phases. You do not, uh, you know, when you start the implementation phase, you do not go back to the design or the requirement analysis phase. So this is what typically a waterfall model does, and. It's originated mostly from engineering, so mostly from uh, manufacturing and construct. Well, 
on the waterfall model was brought into the software development by Winston W. Royce in 1970s and presented by Herbert D. Bennington in 1987. Um, even back then already when Royce was writing his paper, he was already complaining and criticizing about the waterfall model in terms of application for software development. So let's look at the pros and cons for waterfall model. So a waterfall model uh, pros is that as you have a preemptive issue handling. So basically means if you do your planning correctly, you do your planning correctly, you do your research correctly, you may be able to find constraints and faults and limitations. So you can opt for an alternate solution before you, you know, it goes into the implementation bit. It's, e it's a simple model to understand, it's easier. Well, it's linear, so it's straightforward. And it has better documentation. This process has all, this model has always focused and emphasized on these big words. Anyone to know what that means? It basically means if you think too much and you don't get anything done, what's the point? Okay? So what happened here, the general idea is that if you spend your cost of planning outweighs your cost of fixing, then your time spent planning is wasted. Okay? So it's a highly structured, especially for you know a certain kind of uh, production facilities and whatnot. It's a highly structured physical environment. So when that happens is that after you move up from a certain phase, the cost and after effect of going back to a space or change is uh, very costly, if not impossible. It's inflexible in the sense that uh, as your stakeholders or your product owners or your client uh, change the requirement. When that change, you know, you have to redesign, retest and redevelop everything before rolling it out. So that's additional cost there. Okay, what happens uh, in 2001, 70 people came up and signed the Agile Manifesto. What this is, is that uh, if you value your process and your tool, then you should emphasize more on inter individuals and interaction, your inter-team you know, synergy, your teamwork. If, if your comprehensive documentation is important to you, then you should also be focusing more on your working software. And what's the point of having more documents for software that doesn't work, right? Um, if you value contract negotiation, then your customer collaboration should be important to you. And if you like following a plan, basically means that you should be very ready to respond to changes. This is the tool principle of Agile software. I mean, this, it looks like a mouthful, but um, I will explain it, I will summarize it for you later. But uh, you can look this up on the web, online, there's extensive uh, records of it, uh, documents. So, what is Agile? Agile uh, is your magical software development tool that helps you get things done. So look at this. Uh, this is a quick joke here. Agile is cyclic. It's, re it's repetitive. You run through, you know, your process and your phases. So if you're gonna uh, introduce agile to surgery, it's gonna be a bit worrying. So, okay, let me quickly explain what agile is. So you see your your similar waterfall model here. So what agile does is that it introduces feedback into the phases, and you chop them up into smaller cycles. So it basically allows your technical and your implementation uh, and your business scope to align, especially when you have feedback. So it's a cyclic uh, uh, process. Tasks are broken down into smaller chunks, smaller pieces, shorter time frame. So you know, where time where your design and development for one cycle is um, months or three to, three to six months, these are tasks that are done within one to four weeks, for example. So, and Agile is incremental, it's iterative and incremental. Basically what it means is that every one cycle, you complete a smaller task, you complete part of the pro a process, you have achievables and deliverables. And then, uh, it's communication-centric. 
agile focus on your intra team and inter team uh, interaction. So make sure you know it's uh, you talk to the different team that you have your stakeholders. You have different teams, let's say your your database team, your server team, your web team, your dev software development team, your requirement gathering team. They promote interaction and it's uh, highly adaptive. Basically, what Agile does is that it may, it reduces the risk. So if you actually think about it, if you break down your tasks into smaller chunks, what happens is that you reduce the risk of uh, when there's a change, especially in your requirement. And it's quality focus. The goal here, if you look at the manifesto earlier on, the goal here is actually to create a working software or a product. These are three examples of uh, Agile. The more popular one is Scrum. It's an iterative and incremental uh, methodology. It's normally used for managing uh, product, uh, product development. It's flexible and it's a holistic product that promotes e-work. Um, the second one is Kanban. I guess most of you will, re will recognize this. You have your progress, your reports that you always stick in, in each department. So you have your, all your sticky pads and you move your task from one place to another uh, timeline or things to do. So the idea for Kanban is always not to overload a particular team member and to have a visual overview of what's happening. My personal favorite is uh, XP. It actually stands for Extreme Programming. It actually introduces multiple response and multiple feedback into your development phase means that at any time during your coding don't wait until next month's meeting before you actually go out to your design uh, people and ask hey what is this uh, uh, what you, you write this you only to put a, a text box there but I don't know what, what it does you, know? you don't wait so it, it, it promotes uh, interaction and particularly for XP it has very short life cycle that uh, means a very short time span for each other. So I will explain one, uh, I'll give you a uh, scrum in a bit more details, briefly explain this. So we know that Agile is cyclic, is iterative, and it introduces feedback. So how does it work in practice? Let's uh, identify the role first. So for scrum, you have a product owner. A product owner can be your stakeholder, uh, sometimes it's a project manager. Basically, a product owner is a, your gatekeeper. It's not a team, it's not a community. It's one guy who speaks for the business uh, group. And they prioritize on your tasks and your priorities. And then you have your scrum masters. Your scrum masters are basically uh, like an adapter that sits between your product owners and your development team. They translate your product backlog, your tasks, and break them down into technical tasks that your team can understand and reprioritize your, your sprint planning. Uh, notice that you have two development teams. So there's a development team and then there's another development team. So there's a reason for that. It's intentional. Inside Agile, you don't stay in a development team. Let's say you're assigned to this department and then this whole team is your department that runs this development. No, it doesn't work that way for Agile. It means people are adaptive, they change, they switch roles uh, in between teams depending on the task that was assigned to that. Uh, in Scrum, they call it sprint, a sprint, a sprint cycle. So one cycle of it in one phase. Uh, I will explain that in a more later one. Huh? Okay, let's look at the events that you have for Scrum. Uh, as I was saying earlier, you have a product, uh, a backlog refinement. You refine your backlog, you reprioritize your business goal. This is normally done by your product owner. You redefine your goal. Maybe there's a mandate for your MD that says, oh, we need to do this. I implement a whole, whole to all our system. So, you know, you add it to the top of the list. You have a sprint planning. Basically, a sprint planning is translating of your backlog into workable, technical task that you run for one sprint. Think of sprint as one cycle, okay? And then you have your, what you call a sprint review. 
a sprint review, basically you review what you have done for that sprint throughout the cycle, that development. And then uh, you see what you should, could have improved and then you plan for what you're going to, what you're going to do next. And there's another one that's called a sprint retrospective. It's similar to sprint review, but it's done in a different way. It's a different perspective. You take your step back, you come out from a 360, uh, from an eagle eye view, from a top level view. What should the team be doing? What should the team be not doing? And what should the team start or stop? And in between your sprint, let's say your sprint is one to one week uh, or two, four, two, four weeks. If it's four weeks, I mean, you have your daily scrum up there that's uh, basically it's a 10 minutes uh, meeting that everyone comes together. Okay, what did guys, what did we do yesterday? Did we do anything correct? Uh, did, we did, do we, did we achieve what we wanted to achieve yesterday? Did we do it correctly? Can we learn anything from yesterday and apply it to today? So what are we going to do today? Short, five to 10 minutes. Doesn't take very long. And then there are other tasks like Scrum of Scrum. Scrum of Scrum basically means that um, you have meetings, you have feedback uh, across teams. Uh, a Scrum is also, it's pretty much like your development team. Like. So you divide your team members into a Scrum group. So let's, super, let's overlay this. This is how it looks like. So you have your product backlog here, and then you, you translate that into your sprint backlog. So in your sprint backlog, basically what you have is that one cycle takes up, like I said, one to four weeks. And during that cycle, you at the end of the cycle, you have your sprint review, your sprint retrospective. And in between that cycle, you have one daily scrum. So what happens is that, okay, we take one task, okay, let's do the UI. Okay, we're gonna take one week to finish the UI. You run through the cycle, every day you have your meeting. After one week, you come back, okay, done, half done. Let's take another task from the backlog. And then you apply it again, and then you run another scrum. So this is one cycle. It can be three to four members, it can be five to 15 people. It, can, it varies depending on the task at hand. The idea is you have multiple tasks that are running through. Why this is cyclic is that this is basically your implementation, your design, your testing phase that's being done here. It's pretty much a, a waterfall model with feedback. And you, you take the next task, you continue doing this, run the sprint, until your backlog finishes and you get an end product. That's the whole idea of Agile. Okay, now that we, if we put you know, where people are, product owner sits here, he managed the product backlog, he makes sure which is in high priority. The Scrum Master basically look at the Spring backlog and manages the development team. And then you have other development team. Let's say this, guy, this team does the UI, the other team does the database, and you need to connect them. So, you know, after your sprint, you have a scrum of scrums, you get different team to come in. Hey, how you do the interface data mine for your database? How did you do your, the one? Hey, well, we don't into one short problem. Uh, the new server that they bought, uh, no good. Uh, make sure you do this setting. Uh. So this is the whole idea of having scrum or scrum, an inter-team meeting. Now, what are the pros and cons for using Agile? Let's start with the cons. Cons are the documentation gap. In general, people think that if you do uh, Agile development, you do, not, uh, you do not need to document. That is not true. That is not true. Uh, people tend to mis uh, get misled by, the, by that you actually need to do your documentation. Although your documentation is not as comprehensive as a big design or business plan or an entire design plan. And you have comprehension difficulty. Um, obviously, if you know, this is not linear compared to a linear mod waterfall model, this is harder to understand. You have extra inefficiencies. So basically, bad implementation of Agile can introduce more overhead into your company, in your organization, especially when you have a history of standing process that you follow. And also you have a higher skill set requirement, means the team and the scrum team that are working there, they are not just uh, oh, maybe one particular language of development, they are cross team, they are people of different skill set. 
Hey, let's get the why are the pros for agile. Pros and cons. Uh, the, the pros is that you have the close collaboration, means people from your business segment and your uh, development segment and your technical people are in close proximity. They talk to each other. They you know they interact with each other. You have quality improvement. Well, if you take a big task that was planned for, let's say, a six-month development plan, you chop it up into one week or three days uh, cycle, and you let them run through that particular task. They have the time to develop the code, they have the time to test the code, and they have the time to bug fix the code. And, for, and pretty much they are focused. So that day you improve your quality from smaller tasks. And continuous improvement. Agile lets you continuously improve a live system. Yes, a live system. In this case, you are probably talk about your production system. Why is continuous improvement? Because you chop your task into small little tasks now, and the overall risk and impact when deploying a small change to a big system is less than you do an entire six-month development and throw it into your, into your production environment. So that's continuous improvement. It's highly transparent. This is good. Because you break your task into small task into small scrum, right? What happened is that the skill set or the learning curve for a developer is lower. You can just swap people in from different teams. Okay, this scrum between you and I now, uh, we don't need your specialty. You need to go to the other team because you are the database expert. Go to the other scrum team. You get the other guy who is also uh, another team and you swap them. So the learning curve is lower. So it's highly transparent and because, you know, everything is laid out in your scrum plan and your sprint. It's adaptive to change. So, like I said, if you have a change in requirement, you change your backlog, and then after one sprint, you come back and look at the backlog, you reevaluate, you convert that. So you're actually adapting to the continuous change in your requirement and your technical development. Also, you have better visibility. Because of the short iteration, right? And uh, and how the business are involved in this, the product owner, the stakeholders, are able to see what their requirement has manifested into. So that's it for Ajam. Any question? When you're doing agile, does that mean that uh, you're encouraging scope creep? Um, when you do agile, are you um, does it doesn't it uh, encourage scope creep? Scope creep is in run, uh, moving away from scope. And on. <laughs> Yes, it does add and on and on and on. But that's why your scrum master or your uh, product owner is there. They are supposed to look, they are responsible to make sure that what you have in place on the backlog product is feasible, it's within your target timeline as well. So you don't stray away. You, have, you change your scope, yes. But sometimes, you know, the people who give you the requirement, the business requirement for your development, does not know what the working software will look like in the end. Because they are not developers, they are from the business. They may give you a business uh, process that, uh, and then your development team may have a different idea of what they want. So sometimes it doesn't tell you. So refinement change, but it changed slightly. Um, Any other question? So basically you mentioned about what to call Agile and within Agile there are different types of approaches. So uh, based on your, your experience in the past, so which of these approach has a high success rate? And you mentioned about cons, so what was your experience in mitigating these cons? So you're asking me whether what are the pros and uh, with how to mitigate the cost and what are the difference that they have the, the track history that they have. Mm -hmm. 
Um, if you look at Scrum, go online, look at Scrum. It actually has a, it's a very it's a proven concept for especially for product management. It's a proven concept. There's even certification for it. You can be a certified Scrum master. You can be a certified Scrum trainer even. Um, so in terms of pros and cons, how do you mitigate the cons, right? It look it all depends on your your environment. So like I said, you may it may introduce extra inefficiencies, for example. Uh, for an agile development, yes, if a bad agile implementation is done, you will have high overhead. Why is that? Your teams are not practicing it. Your teams are not coming for meeting, uh, or you know things that you're supposed to do, you don't do. Basically, no one is committed towards practicing it. Then you're the only one practicing it. That's how things like that happen. Then you're better off doing your waterfall model. Get everyone signed from beginning to end. Okay. Does that answer your question? Majority of process currently now is the orthodox we're doing is waterfall, yes. And very few uh, development and product, uh, well, not very few. La. These days, they are a lot of companies are adopting it. Last time, they, uh, they used to use a lot of waterfall. Um, one last question. No? Okay, thank you.